There's countless rumours, videos, photos and screenshots circulating the internet which shows Trisha Paytas allegedly physically assaulting Moses. Some are apparently alleged to be fake, but others are alleged literal video confessions, and it's all being swept under the rug apparently. More and more people are coming forward and pointing out her behaviour in past relationships, mostly around the time her partners abandon her. On Reddit, there's currently a popular thread which dives into her past and current relationships and how she treats people. This was posted three months ago. TW, why is Trisha Paytas physically assaulting Moses being swept under the rug? She was abusive towards Sean and Jason too, so it's a pattern. She has a history of being abusive and her hitting and Moses is not an isolated incident. Why is H3H3 okay letting someone who beat slash physically assaulted their brother to be given a platform? Is money that important? And here we can see an alleged conversation that Moses had had with either his sister Hila or Ethan Klein. And try to have chicken soup or pho tonight. Got small tea update. Oh really? And what happened? She called a couple times yesterday and texted. This was my reply. And as we can see he had attached a photo of a that she had allegedly given him. Oh wow, I knew she would be back at it again. And here we can see more leaked messages from Moses. Someone had said, I know at this point. Smith, we both need it. But I think I'm getting my 2k back so haha. Haha, I need it more than you. Huh, just kidding. Coming out of an relationship is no joke. I could imagine, mentally and emotionally. But yeah, you need it more. I need a vacation away from my vacation. Lol. I'm just going to be a part of your enjoyment. In the Reddit thread, someone else had exposed this. Just some info and sources for the ones who don't know about this. And so I can avoid being bombarded with the same questions. First couple of months when Trisha and Moses met, their relationship was only as friends, and Moses says that in her videos. They were quarantining together and only had a friends with benefit relationship. Moses was seeing a couple of girls, including his ex, a girl he slept with, and a girl who catfished him. Not only was he seeing them, but he was also gossiping about Trisha to them. Yikes. One day before the end of April, Trisha found out he was messaging other girls, despite them only being friends. Then repeatedly, threw his keys over a fence so he wouldn't leave, and then tackled him and wouldn't let him leave unless he had with her. In the first Frenemies episode, Ethan mentions that Moses messaged him, that Trisha punched him, and then Trisha totally dismisses what happened and says that it was nothing and that it was just a light punch. Look at the pictures and try to tell me that's a light punch. Now here's where it gets interesting. You know the catfish that I mentioned? Well, an account by the name of Spelling T, the original account that shares those DMs, got deleted. She had DMs that showed how Moses said that Trisha was abusive and shared his b****s to a catfish account that leaked those photos and DMs. Trisha, then a couple of episodes later into Frenemies, has a breakdown and tells Ethan that it's his fault for those DMs leaking because if they never talked about it on Frenemies, then that account wouldn't have shared those DMs. Trisha also made a whole podcast episode where she read Moses' leaked DMs towards other girls. The video is deleted, but the audio is still up on podcast own, which is weird because they were never in an actual relationship when this happened. Yet she beat him and then made this podcast humiliating him. And then again on the Reddit thread, here was another example that someone listed. Number two, Jason. Just a compilation of the things that Trisha did to Jason. Chased him around with a naked. When he was having a bipolar episode, she barricaded the door and wouldn't let him leave. And she was up all night making sure he wouldn't escape. She chased Jason around with her car, to his house and tried to get into his house. The real reason why Jason stopped talking to her made him have to there every day and made him get injections too. He had sex with him when he was sleeping, would neck him all the time and be toxic towards him and make fun of him. Videos of her with Jason shows her being extremely toxic and draining towards Jason, but Jason is apparently bad because he told her to put the nuggets down once. Moses, her current fiance, said in leaked messages with that catfish that Trisha put Jason through hell. And lastly, here was another example in the Reddit thread. Number three, Sean. She also made a video outing him. Here we can see in a tweet Trisha had said, I physically restrained Sean from leaving me and calling me names. Never once did he retaliate back. I effed up, yet people blame him. In response to this thread, someone had commented, I'm literally not surprised at all. Even if I knew absolutely nothing about her, this fits under diagnostic criteria for BPD in, I believe, the first criteria, frantic efforts to avoid real or perceived abandonment. This is why BPD is stigmatised and even lots of psychologists don't want to go near it. Not making any definitive opinions here, I think this is overall complex. But one thing that is not complex is that this is never acceptable behaviour. Being mentally ill does doesn't excuse a b at all. People are also now pulling out the since deleted video Trisha had made with Moses on the TikTok. Relationship edition. Put a finger down if they wouldn't let you hang out with the opposites. Put a finger down if they wouldn't let you like certain people's photos. Put a finger down if they got mad if you didn't respond in five minutes. Put a finger down if they ever got physical or threw something at you. Put a finger down if they ever do sex. Put a finger down if you gotta keep your location services on. 
put a finger down if they've killed themselves if you've tried to break up with them. <laughs> put a finger down if they've called you names. Put a finger down if they called you overly sensitive but really they were just being mean. And lastly, put a finger down if they've ruined your life. And once again, no one is questioning why this video was deleted. In one of Trisha's recent exposing videos on Ethan Klein, she'd said this. It's just like the Moses thing of, of you know, I, I, I last summer and it doesn't matter the circumstances, like I am and that gets thrown in my face all the time and I, it's fine, but I'm not, I'm not a, a domestic I'm not this repeat of you know what I mean? Like someone tweeted about this video saying, lol, I'm sorry. Did I just watch Trisha Paytas in a new video admit to physically abusing Moses, but somehow making herself out to be the victim? WTF? Angelica Oles had recently tweeted, the fact that in all of this, people are ignoring Trisha admitting to abusing Moses? Why is everyone skimming over that? And more importantly, defending them. Someone had tweeted, I remember the vlogs of her doing the same thing to Jason when he tried leaving her house. I'm not a fan of his, but her saying she's not a repeat offender isn't true. She needs serious help. And here's a tweet that Trisha had tweeted a few days ago that said, Moses didn't want to date me for months because of extreme episodes and I'm shocked he stayed around. But since getting treatment together, for me, I haven't had one with him since November 2020 and it's proof that what I'm doing is working, even if it's just an inch over a mile. Someone responded, didn't you abuse him though? Now, a while back when Trisha's ex-boyfriend Jason Nash was getting cancelled earlier this year, his 23-year-old girlfriend was also getting exposed for posting some not so anonymous things on Reddit, asking for a advice from people about her relationship with Jason. Within this not so anonymous post, Jason's younger girlfriend exposed Trisha's treatment towards Jason while they were dating. And honestly, it won't shock you. How can I balance my mental health with a partner who has severe PTSD? A little less than two years ago, I started hooking up with a man while he was in town for a work trip. I live in New York and he lived in LA, which I happened to travel to around twice monthly for work. He also traveled to New York for work often, and we started to hook up on a semi-regular basis. Note, I'm in my mid-twenties, and he is in his mid-40s. I never expected anything more than a hookup, let alone to see him again, but we became instant friends. Eventually, I began to develop feelings, but found it rather unlikely as he was in the public eye for work a lot, and I'd just begun my career in New York City. In the beginning of my feelings, it was brought to my attention that the man had suffered BPD and had severe PTSD from his past relationship, which ended in May. We met in late June. His past partner used to physically and mentally abuse him, stalk him, attempt to ruin his career, and more to the point where sometimes I would hear him cry himself to sleep. He used to flinch sleeping next to me out of fear of being hit. The longer the relationship went on, the more annoyed I began to get. I felt like I was being played and that my patience had been ignored. I had numerous conversations about starting a relationship, even if it was very slow, but he still could not seem to get over his ex and the baggage that came with their relationship. We still continued to see each other and still remain close friends. I moved to LA around three months ago for work, which I did for myself and nothing related to him. Since I was busy with work, I only saw him three times since living in LA, which is very unlikely for us, as we saw each other more while living by coastal. After numerous conversations throughout the year, about my feelings. During our last talk before the holidays, I told him how I felt again, and he still said he was not ready for a relationship. After much thought while back in New York, I really assessed my situation and decided it was in my best interest to leave. Although I truly am in love with this man, I feel like my emotions are often invalidated. While in New York, a mutual friend of mine who knew them both prior to me told me a horror story about his ex-girlfriend with graphic details of how she s him and a series of audio messages his ex sent my friend while confessing to crack her current his, calling his job, seeing him online, him, and graphic details of the action she did to him. After getting this information, I'm starting to feel selfish for leaving him and want to be a better friend to him. Does anyone know how I can do this? And does anyone have any advice for our relationship? Even if we never were to date, I love and truly care about this person deeply and never want to lose them fully. I just also feel extremely hurt over the fact that I'm in love with him and he can't commit to me. Is it worth the wait? And if so, should I remain patient? Lastly, what are some nice things to do and say to show that I'm patient and care for him? He has had a rough week with the PTSD as his ex has started calling his work again. So, what are your thoughts on all the alleged receipts that are coming to light? Let me know in the comments.